Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Alright, haven't really drafted a Sterix deck yet, so that could be a fun one. Uh, Blitz can be decent if we wanted to force a cycling deck, which may be the best approach to get the highest win percentage. We could take Marmoset, but let's go with the Sterix and then hope to wield Symbiotes. So, want to end up with a nice Mutate deck, and wow. Don't think I can pass up on Blood Curdle, sadly, but Recluse would have been nice with the Sterix. Uh, charge is also quite good, but I think Curdle's still quite a bit better than Charge as a more reliable removal spell, and we probably want to be Black Green anyways if we're going to Mutate. Maybe Sultai for a bit of blue, but yeah, Blood Curdle's just too good. I have seen some of the spiders wheel. People don't prioritize them too much, so you never know. Well, it's a pretty late fire prophecy. Don't see any amazing mutate creatures. Poachers are human, so not the best with mutate. Small, fine for the reanimation deck. Just gonna stick to the good removal and then see where we end up. Could end up Jun's mutates. I do like Sandworm quite a bit. Doesn't seem to be the best uh, Whirlwind of Thought deck. Dar Tactics could be good, but doesn't go with our red and green. The Thornwood Falls if we wanted to go Sultai and abandon the red maybe, or end up four colors. But Sandworm's good, especially if we end up with a bit of a reanimation sub-theme with uh, Back for More. Or... Uh, the five mana bonds. So, let's take a sandworm. Another sandworm. Bloodfell Caves would also be nice. Ivy Elemental, pretty late reflection, so not too many people in the cycling deck. Ivy is good with mutates. And we already have a sandworm, so we can maybe get another copy later if we end up with a reanimation deck. So maybe it is worth it to take the Ivy Elemental. Ooh, Cavern Whispers, nice. So, getting this uh, six pick is a pretty good sign that a Black Mutate deck could be available. Big fan of the Farfinder too, which would be great for mana fixing if we end up three colors. Jungle Hollow would also be nice if we end up Black Green. But maybe I need to cut off the Cavern Whisper here. I think I'll take it here just to try and cut off the Mutate archetype and get the same decision. Didn't think we want a Slither Wisp. I might uh, take Farfinder now. It is a pretty late Slither Wisp, but it's kind of difficult to make the blue-black flash deck work, and... I don't know, we don't have any flash synergies yet. Yeah, Farfinder is a good mutate enabler, it fixes my mana. But... Yeah, like, I, I definitely want both here, don't get me wrong, but I think I want a Farfinder now. Alright. Well, now I'll take the Whisper over Deadweight and Honey Mammoth. So I've got two Whispers and one Farfinder. It's kind of ideal. Deadweight or Leech. There's also Cloud Piercer if we want to go heavier on Mutates. But it is on the splash, which is not amazing. Our deck doesn't have a ton of cheap interaction. We've got Fire Prophecy. And then our deck's kind of slow. So maybe we want Deadweight, but I'm also a big Leech fan. So it doesn't look like we wield that uh, green 2-drop, but that's not too surprising. Corpse Churn or Raking Claws on the splash. I'll take a claws. Nothing here. Maybe I'll play crystal. Falls in case we end up soul tie. So black seem pretty open. 
with those late cavern whispers, even got the Bloodfell Caves. Memory leak also playable, but gotta take the mana fixing. Ooh. Alright, so we're definitely in the right color combinations. But uh, yeah, hopefully we get more mutate synergies. Well, Porky Parrot's a pretty good one. Narset's okay, but I don't think we've got the right setup for it. Uh, Ram through would also be pretty good, but yeah, I guess Primal Empathy if we want to splash it. But if we're going to be the Mutate deck, Porcupine should be quite good. We can also be on the lookout for Death Touch creatures like the Boot Nipper at 2 mana, which we kind of want anyways for Mutate. And then that would synergize quite well with the Porcupine. Don't think we've passed up on any Boot Nippers. Well, well, well. Not gonna pass up on a Quartzwood Crasher, even though it's not ideal in terms of mana. I guess we could be red-green splash black instead of black-green splash red. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna pass up on this. Think it's a great horn here. Raptor's good. It is good to mutate onto. The problem is like how reliably can we play it on turn two? Great horn is just a very good mutate creature. And we want more mutate creatures. It ramps, fixes my mana, so it's kinda perfect. We already have two whispers, so don't need to prioritize this one. Can hope to wheel evolving wilds. I guess we do have two whispers to go with a raptor in terms of synergy there. But I think I still prefer Greathorn, just because I don't see myself as a base red-black splash green deck. Green is often just an important main color in these uh, mutate decks. Uh, Serpent versus Evolving Wilds versus Deadweights. I think I prefer the Wilds. We don't seem to be a reanimation deck that wants to cycle expensive creatures and get them back. But uh, the mana fixing seems important. Deadweight could be okay, but hopefully we can pick up some boot nippers in terms of early interaction and board presence. To also go with our porky parrots. Don't have any humans at the moment, so the wolf bear is just a 4 mana 4-4. Four four, so can probably do better. Blitz leech seems fine. As another curve topper. Farfinders, great. Good mutates, targets, a bit of mana fixing, nice value card. Uh, currently, my only removal is Prophecy and Blood Curdle and then Leech to a lesser extent. So I might want a Mutual Destruction to go with these Farfinders. Otherwise, I don't have a ton of great sacrifice fodder. Otherwise, there's a dead weight. But the problem is that this doesn't kill any of the cycling payoff cards at uh, 3 mana, so it's kind of medium. A lot of options here. Highlands, not a cavern whisper, might take the whisper, but the uh, dual land would be nice too. Especially if we plan on casting this crasher, which is kind of tricky to cast. Scorpion's also fine in terms of like a cheap body to mutate onto, but probably still worse than a uh, a brushwag, which we can hopefully get, or a boot nipper. Go for blood seems fine. Yeah, the early game currently is the main issue. Would love to get boot nippers, but we haven't seen any so far. We have seen a lot of Cavern Whispers, but that's not the issue. So yeah, any one or two drops that work well in Mutates, we will definitely try and take. I don't think I want Friendship though, even though I can mutate on the non-human half.
Now, I think I take Bootnipper over Ram Through, as good as Ram Through is. I just need a two drop here. Jerudal's okay, but we've got enough late game. And looking at the mana costs, the payoffs are mostly odd numbered, so I think I prefer Bootnipper over it. And we don't have any ramp to really get Jeruda in play faster, so it's like a 6 mana 6-6 six, six that sometimes will get value, and that fills the graveyard a little bit. I don't know, I think Bootnipper's better. Gonna take another one, and of course we've got the Porcupara to combo with it. Uh, Space Godzilla would also be good, since that's another way of giving Porcupara Death Touch. But uh, hopefully one of these three expensive cards wheels. I just need more cheap non-humans for mutate purposes. Yeah, probably Evolving Wilds. Scorpion's like... pretty unexciting in terms of mutate targets. Brushwag would be much better. And the self-mill from Excavation Mall doesn't do much for me. So it's just a 3 mana 3-3 three, three Trampler, which is fine, but not exciting. Go for Blood or Evolving Wilds. Don't think I'm interested in Wolverine, since we don't have many non-creature spells in this deck. Probably go for Blood. It's also okay with the Bootnippers. Could maybe Splash Heron. I've got Thornwood Falls. Swiftwater Cliffs, two Evolving Wilds, two Farfinders, so adding one island to the deck could be reasonable. And our deck doesn't have much evasion. Don't have a ton of Tramplers to go with the Wild Bonder. Goriax, so I can okay three mana mutate target, but not exciting. Yeah, the only issue with Heron is that, like, Cavern Whisper takes up the same slots in the curve. But we'll see. Don't think we missed out on anything in that pack. Glimmerbell would be nice if we were heavy blue to combo with the Porky Parrots, but I don't think we can realistically play Glimmerbell early. So it's like Dark Bargain versus Mole, but they're unlikely to make the final cuts. Uh, maybe Mole makes it since we could use more three mana creatures. All right, there's a Brushwag, easy peasy. Nothing that I want here. Don't think we're friendshipping. But I also don't think we want Corpse Churn. So, ended up missing a few one or two mana creatures to mutate onto. But I'm glad we prioritized those bootnippers. There's nothing I'm gonna play here. Wasn't going to play Connection even with those Cavern Whispers. Don't need Crystal. Alright. So, our deck's playable, not perfect. Definitely would have liked a couple uh, of that uh, green 2-drop that works with Mutate. So in terms of cheap creatures, we have Brushwag, two Bootnippers, Mole, two Farfinders, which is not a lot. I guess Ivy Elemental I can always play early if I need to. Got Great Horn that we can potentially mutate for 3 mana, Porky Parrot for 3, Herons for 4, and then all these Whispers for 4, Sterics for 6. So I think we are probably still Black Green Splash Red, 
but we have a pretty deep splash. Do I want this Dreamtail Heron on the splash? I have two dual lands, but of course playing a ton of tap lands is also going to hurt my curve. So it's probably not worth it, even though I would only need to add a single island to the deck. And the two tap lands. And then... The fixings are right between the caverns, the hollow, two evolving wilds, two farfinders. So it shouldn't be too difficult to make this three color deck work. Maybe I play friendship just to have a 1-1 a token to mutate onto. But it's kind of unexciting. I guess it's also good with the mutual destruction. Maybe it's worth it. And then cut the mole as a more expensive creature that's not particularly synergistic. I guess mole has a bit of synergy with the crasher, but that's about it. I could cut the crystal. Alright, this seems okay. And then hopefully Parrot and Greathorn are kind of 3-drops in this deck. Whisper's a 4-drop. And then this we can cycle. So this is more like the curve. Alright, seems okay. And then the mana base. So pretty splits. Rats, we need double for the Crasher. And we need a little bit of it early for the friendship. But it's mostly black and green that we need early. But it's probably going to be pretty evenly split across all three colors. So right now I have 5, 6, 7, 8 green plus the two Farfinders. I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 black. And 4, 5, 6, 7 reds. I guess we don't have a reason to main green. So I can maybe cut a forest for a swamp. The Whisper Quads. Nice. On the play, and yeah. I've got a Keeper. We'll need... A bit of fixing before we can play Crasher, but just need any land to go turn for Whisper. Probably leaning Lifelink for the Boot Nipper, especially if we're gonna mutate the Menace onto it, in case we're trying to race. Guess we'll do it end of turn here. Probably gonna get forests. Now I can mutate onto the token instead of the boot nipper. So I can attack with both this turn. So it might still be better to mutate onto the 1-1. One -one. Because I would be fine trading for Raptor. Opponent takes it. The life gain is nice, but it's we're not really in a racing situation where that seems important. The way this game is probably gonna progress for the opponent to stay in the game is them using removal or trying to stabilize. I guess I'll do this now. Opponent's taking eights. Now 
And there we go. That was over pretty quickly, and yeah, the Cavern Whisperer definitely put in some work. And the late addition of Forbidden Friendship also giving us an extra target to mutate. Alright, need any lands into draw steps. And then we have our mutate target for the parrots. Can get my red mana for prophecy. Maybe discard leech, or I can sack Farfinder to the destruction. So up against the blue-green. Sultai. So also maybe a mutate deck. So not sure yet what we'll do next turn. Depends what they do. If they give me a good target for the one damage from parrots, I might do that. Otherwise... Alright, opponent's just drawing some cards. Think I still mutate parrots. To get in for three, and then I can also ping them. This plus Vigilance is kind of nice. Although they likely have removal for this. Next turn I can fetch up second rats, so we can maybe play Crasher if we draw it. Ooh, Sterix is nice. Alright, so I might get rid of the Mutual Destruction with Fire Prophecy here. And then I can still cycle the Sandworm. That's a good one. And then get my double red sorted. Sequencing was a little off there. They probably wanted to reverse that order. Alright. Um, we redrew the destruction we put on the bottom by shuffling. I think I just play Starix as a separate creature and then I can mutate the Whisper onto it next turn. Sounds alright. They are drawing a lot of cards. Dead weights, sure. Another one. All right, procure it down. Ooh, probably still go for this. Could attack if they take it, hit them for 12. But I don't have a way to necessarily finish them off. Yeah, let's have some fun. Not a bad deal, I would say. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> nice. Imagine raking claws with the uh, trampler. Ooh, Porky Parrot plus Bootnipper. Let's make it happen. Up against the blue red spell stack. Yeah, let's play a bootnipper. I guess to play around Assassin Scatter, we could have played Friendship instead. Just getting this to for toughness is already a big deal against the uh, Fire Prophecy. But of course, no lack of interaction from the opponents. I might develop my mana first before we go for the Wombo Combo. I wait for them to play creature worth killing. Yeah, I'll be patient. Probably get my double red sorted. Opponent keeping up a bunch of mana. Suspicious. So probably double tutor up here. Still don't really want to trade Bootnipper, so we'll just send Farfinder. Could also cast Porky Parrots as a 3-4 and a mutate Sterex onto it later. I guess if I play Mountain then I'm not guaranteed to be able to play Sterex for 5 if that's something I want. Hmm. Nah. Still do this. I guess I could have friendshiped pre combat to get in for one. Nah, yeah, still do this. They might be holding up counter spells or capture spheres or who knows what else. Sure. That's a deal. Could go for lifelink this time, but if they do kill the Death Toucher, I want to make sure I have one to go with the parrots, so... Probably still go for Death Touch. Alright, uh, I guess I'll play another Farfinder. Just need them to tap out. Oh yeah, Blazing Volley here would be painful. Although I don't think I've seen that card cast yet in Limited. Pyroceratops keeps up 2 mana, maybe for an Essence Scatter. Maybe for Fire Prophecy. I mean, if I mutate the Sterex onto, let's say, the Farfinder and they kill the response, I still get my Sterex in play. I could just go for 
end of turn leech, kill gremlin, and then untap and try and do something. I mean, if I get to resolve the Sterics and they don't have Essence Scatter exactly, it's pretty good. So I think I do just Sterics. It's too bad. Nah, I don't really want to trade when we have Leech that can kill Gremlin, although it could also remove counters from Paraceratops. Hopefully they feel comfortable tapping out now that we've played our big finisher, quote-unquote. And we get to rank them with the uh, parrots. Ah, I guess end of turn leech it is. At least we're playing around Convolute by hitting our land drops. Alright, hopefully that's the last counter spell. <laughs> Gotta go for it now. I guess I can bait with a uh, <laughs> brushwag here. Gotta counter this, come on. Is this a shatter pause where they're like, oh no. Or is this the which answer am I going to use pause? Oh boy. That all the answers. At least we still have a Death Touch or two hold of the Ceratops. But it's not looking good. Drawing another Mutate creature means we can still kind of enable the Parrots. Which might be the play. Alright, so opponents on empty. Shoot down Gremlin. And then... Uh, I guess we're in a weird... kind of racing situation between the Glimmer Bell and the Porky Parrot. Although I guess we can start hitting for four. If they untap Glimmer Bell, I guess that's a problem. So I just have to race one for one. Uh, I'm actually able to double pump Brushwag, so if they don't draw another spell, I can pump this up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Alright, that's a good one. Let's just kill the Ceratops.
So yeah, they can untap the Glimmer Bell, so do I want to trade Bootnipper for Glimmer Bell in the spots? Against blue reds, like what giant creature that doesn't have first strike or flying are they gonna play? This seems fine. Let's diversify. Voracious Great Shark, wow. That's a card. Can't risk the uh, brush wagon combat here. Next turn I can double pump it. So they're dead if they have nothing. So I don't think I should attack with Farfinder yet. Well, the Brushwag definitely uh, did some work in the end there. And the spider opponent having infinite answers, they eventually ran out. I guess that statement doesn't really make sense. They had almost infinite answers. Sure. Cycle the Worm, hopefully hit green mana, and then we've got Friendship into Greathorn into Cavern Whisper. Yeah, Friendship proved to be a pretty solid addition since we were a little bit low on uh, non-humans otherwise to mutate on too early on. pretty good. We're out of uh, non-humans now to mutate onto. Probably just cast a whisper now. Got a, a wealth of options here. I mean, mutating Sterix can be bad. Although just resolving Leech. Let's see, this is only spells, so not abilities. So I could just kill this right now. That's got to be better. Opponents on the back foot, they don't have a great blocker for the leech at the moment, and maybe next turn I can mutate onto it. This might be a first strike glider. Yep, to hold off the leech. A 
if I just mutate Sterix on Leech, attack with Whisper and Leech, that's pretty good. And I get a Sterix trigger. I think I like that the best. We've been pretty lucky with the Steric so far. Interesting attack. Um, I mean, what can they have here? Whatever combo trick they use here, they can't use in my turn. I guess like startling development, sure. I don't know, I'll just take it. Let's get in there, and then if their plan was... I don't know what their plan was, but... Let's find out. I see. Uh, sure. That happens. I mean, if I put them to one, Porcupert can also burn them out. Let's just kill this now. Can just play the Great Horn and next turn mutate parrots. I don't know. Don't think it matters too much. Could have mutated onto the Sterics, could have double mutated to make him discard two cards. But uh don't think there's a combination of cards that gets them out of it. Yeah, I guess double mutating on Starx would have been fun. Facing an Omori deck? Oh boy. If we can assemble Porky Parrot plus Bootnipper against an Omori deck, we should be in for a good time. Currently missing a cheap non human. I think I'm still keeping. Just because Porky Parrot could potentially just win us the game. They could still have Blitz Leech to remove the Death Touch counter from it, but there's not many other answers if we assemble the combo. Ivy Elemental. I could play for one here, and then next turn Porky Parrot, turn after maybe Whisper, and can start dealing two damage. To so know if that's the direction we want to be headed, or if we just want to give ourselves the best chance of drawing into a Bootnipper. And then if I don't, I can just play Ivy for two next turn. I think I'm gonna end up cycling for now. So no bootnippers at the moment. So I guess Ivy for two now. And next turn mutating the parrot makes us into a five six, which can attack past to Mori.
And I can even go for blood to fight. So get my second mountain. Ooh, Cub Warden. That's a scary one. And I can only deal 4 damage to it with Prophecy and Porky Parrots, but if I mutate, then I can make it 5. I think I just killed now, although I guess they can't have any pump spells with Omori as their companion, so... If they mutate, I can just kill their response, but I guess they could get a discount on mutate, potentially. And I just killed now. I take one damage, but I don't think it's as relevant as them maybe getting a discount on getting a mutate creature in play on the cheap. So now I've got a two damage Porky Parrots. Opponent gets their blue mana. Alright, if they have great sharks, they could maybe bounce my mutation. For now, I just like attacking and then. Can maybe block the Great Horn and shrink it down with a leech. Playing Cavern Whisperer could also be fine. Yeah, could have also played Leech and killed it with the parrots. Would have been very reasonable too. Parcel Beasts, so 2 for Death Touch. Nah, we'll let it happen. Now I can. Whisper onto the Porky Parrots, attack with both their Force to Trade here for the Leech. Or I could just attack for 5 and then finish them off, I guess it works too. Ooh, Brockos, that's a nice one. GG's. Parrot put in some work, even without a boot nipper to combo with it. Alright, time for the final boss. Alright, we're on the play. Yeah, I'll keep this. Farfinder has a nice mutate target, fix my mana, can cycle gopher blood to hit my third land drop if needed.
And surprise, surprise, another cycling deck. Should cycle this now in case of a tap land. It feels bad to cycle these because they're answers to snare tacticians, but I really need my land drop here. For now, Wolverine's manageable. Pacifism. Yeah, that is a good answer to mutates. Alright, so next turn we can maybe play Crasher. Sounds exciting. Hopefully they won't have another Pacifism. Don't think I want to kill the Wolverine, because... Snare Tactician would be much more annoying. So I'll probably take three. Alright. Maybe now I'm fine killing the Reflection by blocking with the Farfinder. Although I guess if they put another instant or sorcery in the graveyard, this could trade for the Crasher, whereas Reflection doesn't. So it's kind of interesting here. I think I probably still kill Wolverine. Make it more difficult for them to block my Crasher. Do I discard the Sandworm? Maybe I need to dig for more removal. But next turn I place Crasher. And then I'm just like two lands away from casting a Great Worm. So I don't think I discard anything. Can also ramp with the Great Horn to get an extra land. But if they don't have an answer to the Crasher, we're in pretty good shape. That's fine. So land here would be excellent, so we can kill the Rescuer with Leech. Although they might be trying to set up a double block with the token they generate as well. But then I guess Leech could... Yeah, shrinking down reflections not enough if they block with a rescuer, but if they just block. Alright, never mind. So we're gonna get our hidden, and Porky Parrot was a nice pickup too. So I can attack, and then before blockers shoot down the rescuer. Seems good. Or I can put it on the Whisper. I guess it's fine too. Make him discard. Although with the Farfinder we get to hit for 3, but I guess it's not really needed. It's close here between the two. I guess we'll put the Cavern Whisper to use. Hmm. 
Let's just kill that and attack for six. Don't need to make it too complicated. I think I cycle this main phase to try and hit the leech. I don't think we'll need to cast Sandworm to win this game. The only card I'm concerned about at this point, all right, opponent explodes, is potentially the five mana clash, which makes two of my creatures fight. I've had that card cast against me in this exact situation where I had a crasher and a token, and they killed both with one card, which felt kind of bad. But most cycling decks don't have room for those cards. All right, so. Weren't able to dodge the cycling defeat here, but uh, gotta get used to that. Still a pretty nice performance for the Whisper Squad. Let's crack some packs. Cub Warden, definitely a powerful card. Lucky we were able to deal with it during one of our games, since it is a card that can get out of hand pretty quickly. Kogla has to be one of the best rares in the set. Pack one, pick one. Don't know if we prefer Kogla or uh, Mecha Godzilla, but they're both amazing first picks. The Godzilla, of course, a bit more flexible as it goes into any deck. Mythos of Nethroi, also pretty solid removal spell. It's kind of one mana more expensive than the Heartless Act, but doesn't have any drawbacks. Kinnon is a fine card. It's not an insane bomb, but if unanswered in a stalled game, it's definitely gonna pull you ahead. Pretty similar to the Parcel Beast. I think Parcel Beast is a better early pick than Kinnon, but they're both pretty decent and kind of going a similar style of deck. Parcel Beast has a bit more uh, mutate synergy, perhaps. Another Mythos. Best Mythic in the sets, probably Vivian. And to Drenith Magistrates. Can be pretty effective against companion decks, but still a pretty unexciting card. Alright. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.